What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Pantis. If it's your first time tuning in, please be sure to smash the subscribe button. If not, thanks for your continued support. Today we're going to go into the Saab 95, the one that has 200,000, over 200,000 miles on it at this point. It has been used quite a bit by everybody in the family. It's kind of the extra car laying around. I use it and everybody else uses it when they want to and uh, I think it's a fantastic thing to have around the house here. So in today's episode we're going to go into it and we're going to, I'm going to tell you guys the three performance upgrades that will change your entire Saab experience with these cars. It's something that uh, if you own these, if you own an old Saab, you obviously are an enthusiast of the car. So these three modifications will enhance all of the things that allow you to love the car for what the car provides. So we're going to go into that. But first, let's get an old call, old start, cold start. It it uh, it dropped down to like 14 degrees last night, and uh, it's very cold out here. So the first for, first cold start here. Let's just give you guys an update on the uh, temperature. 14 degrees. See, I wasn't lying about that. And we are at 202 and almost 202 and a half thousand miles. And uh, she starts right off, guys. Pretty amazing. think about how awesome this engine is 202,000 miles it's been driven for 15 years now at this point there is no oil burning there is no hesitation it's just amazing let's hop into this So there's three major components to the Saab that allow us to really be enthusiastic about the car, right? There, it's a unique feeling about these cars um, that allow us to really fall in love with them and enjoy the ride for what it provides. So what are those three things consist of? We have a four cylinder engine, which is not a big engine, but Saab managed to be the revolutionary uh, engineering uh, behind a four-cylinder turbocharged engine. So the turbocharger and exhaust and the tuning are the three major components that allow Saabs to have a significant amount of power for a front-wheel drive car, especially of the generation and the era that these things came out of. So that being said, how do you enhance those? Uh, those are three components of the car that, it, that really allow the car to, to be amazing in multiple ways. Besides for, besides for the fact that the car is a luxury feel, it's got nice you know, features, it drives smooth, it, you know, all those things, right? The handling, all that stuff. Put that aside, let's focus on the three components that provide the power and really create that enthusiasm. So, the first thing is intake, the second thing is exhaust, and the third thing is tuning. So, the three major components are those right there that are easy to upgrade. So the first thing that I would do is open up your intake. The intake allows you to have better airflow, and of course it opens up the sound of the turbocharger. So if you're driving the car, not only are you increasing the performance about five to 10, maybe 15 max on horsepower, but you're also increasing the sound of the turbocharger inside the cabin, which allows you to really enjoy the car Okay, it allows you to really connect more to the turbo, how it interacts with the engine, and if you're really into the enthusiasm of the car and and, and the dri you know being a driver's car that it is, it's a good upgrade. That's the first one. The second one is the exhaust. Now, the reason why I, I suggest this is because, if many of you know, especially in this model, if you drive these cars longer, the longer you drive it the better the exhaust sounds. It's got like a, a meatier, you know, throatier exhaust to it. 
And the, one of the biggest upgrades, the best upgrades that I've ever done to the subs is putting a BSR intake system on. I'm no, I know there's plenty of them out there. This one, we just did a straight pipe and that's enough to really enhance the sound. But it really allows you to increase the, that sound in the cabin without making the car super loud. It allows the car to still sound like a normal Saab, but it just enhances all of the attributes of the Saab exhaust system, and it really brings it forward in the cabin. So as you're driving, if you can connect the exhaust with the turbo, with the driving, it really just all in all encompasses all of the major amazing attributes that Saab brings to the driver feel. Now, the third, if you really thought that all, by the way, before I get into the third, the exhaust will also, if you open up the exhaust a little bit, will also increase your performance yet again with a few extra horsepower. Uh, no, no significant amount on my mind, but I want to say maybe another 20 horsepower. So if you're running a stock, maybe 15 horsepower. So if you're running a stock 250 horsepower on a 9.5, such as this one, right? That's another 30 horsepower. So now you're about roughly 280 which is really a lot of power on a, on, a, on a luxury sedan such as this one, almost 300 horsepower on a stock tune uh, is, is really incredible. So it brings you into the third one. If you guys go with like a Brew City Boost or any of the other performing tuning companies out there or if you have a local tuner that knows how to tune these cars, if you were to just do the upgrade on the intake and the exhaust system and then really put a stage one tune on the car, it would enhance the performance significantly with torque and horsepower, which changes everything. And what's nice about it, about doing just a stage one with these types of modifications, is you're not really putting any harm to the car. You're not really stressing out the components. You don't really have to upgrade any of the fuel systems or anything like that. And of course, with polyurethane bushings and mountings, you're, you, know, you have a solid car with a solid foundation that's gonna have a lot of power and like I said, it's gonna be very reliable as a daily driver. So, stage one increases the torque and again, yet again, the, the horsepower of the car and it enhances, all three of those will enhance what really allows you to have the true driver's, driver's feel of these cars. So, maybe about 1,000, 1,200 bucks you're looking at for everything, guys. It's um, not too crazy, I would say, for, for enhancing what makes you really love these cars and uh, I've done it all before and it's definitely a life-changing experience when you're driving these things and allows you to thoroughly thoroughly love the car for really what it brings so that's just a quick update for you and a quick quick upload on three components that if you really want to enhance the characteristics those are the three that I would do uh, I would leave the brakes alone, leave the suspension alone. Uh, a lot of these cars, especially this one, have the Bilstein suspension from the factory, which is a really premium suspension of its time, allowing you to have a really nice ride feel. And um, if you have an aero package such as this one, the brakes are sufficient for what the car's power and weight ratio are. And, and you know, you don't really need to do anything. If you want to have a nice, reliable, old Saab daily driver, that allows you to be enthusiastic and into the car. So that's my update for you guys, my two cents. So if you have a saved Saab that you really love, those are the three things that I would suggest doing if you wanna put a little bit more time and money into the car. It's not a waste of time or money if you really love the car for what it is. So thanks for watching this. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys next video. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. This blue Saab 9.3 convertible has been sitting in the driveway for a couple months here now, about two months. And obviously, we've been a little bit slow to the start since we've had a lot going on. We had the holidays, we had the New Year's, and then all the other content we've been uploading. So I've really been taking my time before we got started on this. But in the next episode, if you guys stay tuned, I'm actually going to break down, which is really the reason why I haven't started everything, is the real costs uh, and research behind actually bringing this car back to life 100% because obviously, we, you know, the car's in, in rough shape right now with ECM module needing to be rebuilt and I have all these airbag lights on and all sorts of electrical situations that I'm trying to diagnose really behind the scenes uh, before I start to break news to you guys. So 
in the next episode, I've done some digging and I've come up with some numbers and some sort of budget here to that needs to be invested in, invested into the car to properly get it back on the road. And then, of course, we still have body work and tires and brakes. I mean, all this stuff just keeps adding up. So in the next episode, I will be reviewing all of that step by step. So a lot of you guys have been asking and wondering what's going on. That's a little bit of a quick sneak peek of what's coming next.